Well, that's how it started. In Ensign Smith's hometown, 1,500 miles away, I wrote the story. Five minutes after the four-star hit the street, every phone in the office screamed for attention. I was banging out a new lead when... Blake! Listen, Blake, the town's in a tantrum over Smith. Everybody wants to know what killed their favorite son, the only all-American they ever had. Now it's up to you to find out. Talk to these people, they knew him best. And pour on that hero stuff. Smitty, a great performer in a pinch. Whenever the gun got rough, Smitty would roll up his sleeves and pull off his helmet. He was always contemptuous of personal injury. That's how he got the name of Indestructible. And the crowd loved it. Poor Smitty. He was a lovely boy. He never cared about anything. He literally defied the elements. Regardless of the weather, he'd wear the same old outfit. It was sort of a trademark with him, like his nickname. I wonder what killed him. Somebody ought to do something about it. Yes, I knew Indestructible Smith. One summer, I gave him a job in the shop. Gave him a bad time, too, but <laughs> he'd just stand there and grin at me. Seems he never bothered with what you call safety precautions. He was a spunky kid. And done it all. The Navy ought to check them planes before they let a boy get killed like that. So I knocked out a batch of features carrying Smith from cradle to college. To get the dope on his Navy training, I went to see a guy who was at Pensacola with him. Why, sure, Smith received adequate instruction in flight safety and in everything else, just like the rest of us. Flight safety precautions begin on the ground. The well-dressed pilot should wear a regulation flight suit or coveralls with sleeve and pant legs rolled down. You may harbor a deep affection for those old coveralls, but worn-out flight gear is frowned upon in the best aviation circles. Not that the Navy is interested in sartorial elegance. It simply wants to protect you from burns if fire breaks out. Before taking off, check the cabin emergency release for security. Because the canopy could be jettisoned inadvertently, injuring or killing the pilot during flight. Adjust your seat to allow sufficient space between the top of your head and the overturn structure, so you'll be protected in case of a nose over. Always wear helmet, gloves, and goggles. Crank the canopy to the full back position and lock it before every takeoff and landing. Lock the shoulder harness and pull both straps equally tight. If the plane is equipped with the inertia reel, sit well back in the seat because the reel will lock in your position at the time of impact. All very interesting. But the people still wanted to know what was responsible for Smitty's death. They all blamed the Navy. They all thought the tragedy could have been avoided. There was only one way for me to find out. I quite agree with you, Mr. Blake. The tragedy could have been avoided. Uh, take a look at the accident report. Major facial injuries, extreme burns, fatal emergency landing, engine failure cause undetermined. Misuse of safety equipment, shoulder harness locked but not tight, failed to lock canopy in open position, did not wear authorized protective clothing. No indication safety equipment would have failed. Observance of fundamental flight safety precautions would have saved the pilot's life. 